for simple harmonic motion. There are multiple solutions to the basic differential equation, but I'm going to go over two of them and show how they, they agree and give the same thing. So the simple harmonic oscillator is a mass on a spring in one dimension. Uh, when you pull it at some position x, uh, there's a force pulling it back to x equals zero. Uh, this value of that force is negative kx. So if you're over here with positive x, pulls it back. Negative x pulls it forward. Uh, and so the Newton's second law says negative kx is mx double dot. I got a whole video on solving this differential equation three different ways, actually four different ways. But uh, I just want to show that two solutions, there's two solutions to this differential equation. And, and I should say x double dot is the notation that we like to use. It's the second derivative of x with respect to t. And x dot is the first derivative. So we use that. So the two solutions are this one, uh, a co linear combination of cosine and sine, a cosine omega t, b sine omega t, where uh, omega is the square root of k over m. It has to be in order to solve that differential equation. And the second one is this exponential version, which is some constant e to the i omega t plus some other constant e to the minus i omega t. So I'm actually going to do a bunch of stuff here. Number one, I'm going to find the coefficients a and b for this, and they're going to find the coefficients c1 and c2, that's a 2, uh, for this solution. And then I'm going to show how this solution is the same as that solution using the Euler equation. That's a lot of stuff, but let's just do it. So I'm going to start with this solution. Uh, let's just go ahead, <clears throat> let me go ahead and show that it is indeed the a solution to this differential equation. So if I have that as x, I can say x dot, if I take the derivative of that with respect to time, well, I have to take the derivative of cosine is going to be negative sine. So I get negative a sine omega t, but then I have to take the derivative of the inside, the derivative of omega t with respect to t is omega. So I get negative a omega sine omega t. And then over here, I've take the derivative of sine omega t, which is cosine. But again, I got that omega t in there. So I get plus b omega cosine omega t. This will actually be useful in the initial conditions too. Now if I take the second derivative, I get, uh, this goes back to cosine, so I get negative a omega squared cosine omega t minus b omega squared sine omega t. And so if I factor out the omega squared, then I get, or if I factor out the negative omega squared, then I get x. So this is equal to negative k over m x if omega squared is k over m or omega is k over m squared, square rooted. That's where that comes from. So that isn't a solution. Now let's go ahead and apply the initial condition. So if I know at t equals zero, x is zero, I can say x of zero. If I put in uh, t is equal to zero, cosine of omega times zero is one. So I get uh, a sine of zero is zero. So that's gone. So let's get a, and that's going to be equal to x0. So a is equal to x0. That's one initial condition. Now if I look at the second initial condition, x dot at 0. Now if I put in uh, x t equals 0 in this equation, this term goes away. Because sine of 0 is 0, sine of 0, cosine of 0 is 1. So I get b omega. And that's going to be equal to v0. So if I solve this for b, I get b equals v0 over omega. So now I can write this as x as a function of t is x0 cosine omega t plus v0 over omega sine omega t. Okay, done. Oh, my pen's going bad. Okay, let's see if this one's any good. Okay, now we're gonna, we need that for later. Okay, let's go to the other solution. So I want to show that this is a solution. So here I have x as a function of t is c1 e to the i omega t plus c2 e to the minus i omega t. So now if I take the derivative x dot as a function of t, it's going to, the derivative of e to, the I omega, e to the i omega t is e to the i omega t. But then I have to take the derivative of i omega t, which is i omega. So I get uh, i omega c1 e to the i omega t. Do the same thing over here. I get a negative i omega minus i omega c2 e to the minus i 
omega t. Now I'll take the derivative again, x double dot as a function of t is going to be, now I'll get another, I get i times i, uh, where i is the square root of negative 1, so let's get negative 1. So I get negative omega squared, so I got that other omega, c1 e to the i omega t. And then down here, okay, I have a minus and a minus, right? So I'm going to take the derivative of this and get e to the negative i omega t times negative i omega. So I get minus times minus is, is positive. But then I have i times i is minus 1. So I get minus uh, omega squared c2 e to the minus i omega t. So that, again, is true. That's a solution. If I factor out the minus omega, I get back x, so it is a solution. Now let's find the initial conditions. So let's start with x at 0 is going to be equal to c1 times, if I put in 0 for t, I get e to the 0, which is 1. And if I put in 0 up here, I get that. So I get c1 plus c2 is equal to x0. Okay, but I can't find c1 or c2. Okay, now I get x dot at 0. If I put in that right here, again, those terms are 1. I get i omega c1 minus i omega c2 equals v0. Like all good things, you can solve two equations to unknowns, but there is a trick. Okay, if I use a trick, it's going to be a little bit easier. So the trick is I'm going to take this equation and divide both sides by i omega. So this gives me uh, v0 over i omega equals c1 minus c2. Now, if I, I don't like my, divided by i omega um, because I don't, no one likes to put i on the bottom. So if you multiply this by i over i, then I get i on the top, but I get divided by negative 1. So this is actually equal to equal to negative v0 i over omega. Now if I take this, let me rewrite that, c1 plus c2 equals x0. So those are my two equations. If I add these two equations together, then I get 2c1, and then I get c2 minus c2 is 0, and then I get equals x0 minus i v0 over omega and if I divide by 2, I get C1. C1 is x0 over 2 minus i v0 over 2 omega. Boom. And we're going to use that later. Now, what if I subtract this equation from that equation? C1 minus C1 is 0. C2 minus negative C2 is 2C2. So I get 2C2 equals, and then I get x0 minus this. So it's going to be plus i v0 over omega. Divide by 2, c2 is x0 over 2 plus i v0 over 2 omega. Okay, so now I have my two solutions. Now, why do I even care about showing that this is equal to the other solution? And the answer is that suppose I wanted to, I know the initial x and I know the initial v and I want to plot it. Uh, let's say x0 is 0.1, v0 is 0 0.01. I'm just picking stuff. How do I plot this with a, a standard plotting program? Well, if you, you can't put, it's not going to give you an oscillating term, right? Because this is a complex, this is a complex um, thing. There are a couple ways to get around that. But one way is just to convert this, these e to the i omegas into sines and cosines. And we can do that with the Euler formula. So the Euler formula says that e to the i theta is equal to cosine theta plus or minus e to the plus or minus i theta, plus or minus i sine theta. So this is a, I can write this as a complex number of trig functions, a complex number of trig functions, so real and imaginary part. Okay, so let's do that. I'm going to take this function and I'm going to use this to turn them into that. So let's just write those two things down. Um, actually, I'm not going to. I have a piece of paper right here. So I'm going to say x as a function of t is going to be equal to c1. Now I have e to the i omega, so that's going to be the plus. So I'm going to get, uh, this is like theta is omega t. So this is going to be equal to cosine of omega t plus i sine omega t. And then over here I get plus c2 um, 
times cosine omega t minus i sine omega t. Okay, so now let's just multiply this out. I can move that up here. Uh, so I get, and, and I'm going to get the C, the, everything together, but let's just say C1 cosine omega t plus I C1 sine omega t plus C2 cosine omega t minus I C2 sine omega t. Um, okay, so now what do I want to do? Yes, I know what I want to do. Okay, so I want to get uh, the real part together and the imaginary part together. So all the real terms, so here's real, real, let's combine those two together. I get C1 plus C2, and then I have cosine omega t, and then I have right here, I have uh, C1, so plus C1 minus C2 times I sine omega t. Now I know what C1 and C2 are. Remember, C1 is equal to that, x0 over 2 minus i v0 over 2 omega. Is that right? Yep. And then C2 is x0 over 2 plus i v0 over 2 omega. So if I put those in, uh, you can see where I'm going to go because I, I kind of have that C1 plus C2 and C1 minus C2. I kind of had that before. So C1 plus C2, if I add these two together, if I add this term and this term, well, I get x0 two over 2 plus x0 over 2, which is x0. So I get x0. And then I get uh, minus i v0 over 2 omega plus i v0 over 2 omega. Those two things cancel, so I just get x0 cosine omega t. Things are starting to come into focus here. Okay, now if I do C1 minus C2, so now I have this minus that, I get zero. Uh, and then I have this minus that, I get negative I, I get negative I V0 over omega. There's two of them, but it's over two. So I get, so this is gonna be uh, minus I times I, because I had that other I, V0 over omega sine omega t. But what's i times i is negative 1. So overall, I get x0 cosine omega t plus v0 over omega sine omega t equals x as a function of t. That's the same thing. Let me just go back and show you. That is the same thing. So those two solutions are indeed the same. And the nice thing is now I can graph this. That's easy to graph. I can graph sines and cosines. Now, someone may say, well, then why, why even bother with this kind of solution? And one of the answers is if you do damped harmonic oscillator or damped driven harmonic oscillator, these solutions work much better than sines and cosines. And, but they're hard to plot. They're impossible to plot. So you've got to switch over. So there you go. Hope you found that useful.